Good evening, everyone. My name is Jonas Belazier. You're watching HaitianJonas.com. This interview is about Miss um, Girlene Charles Jeffer, and she was a young girl that we went to school together. First school was Riviera, that's a Haitian French school, and the second school was Morningstar Christian Academy. Um, I like to introduce her. Um, before I introduce her, I would like to introduce her pre uh, preview video. Let's check out her preview video and find out what's going on. You are now tuned in to the Haitian Jonas Show. Introducing the new Zulan Press book, Life as an Orphan, by Gerline Charles Jeffers. Life as an Orphan is available at Christian bookstores and online. Purchase it today. Great presentation, Ms. Girlene. And Girlene, um, thank you. Thank you for coming to HaitianJonas.com. I just want you to be, I want people to know um, your trials and tribulation when you were in Haiti and everything. You're going to tell us who you are and tell the people uh, a little bit about you, uh, Ms. Girlene. Hello Jonas, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, like you said, my name is Gerling Charles Jeffers. I'm the author of a new book called Life as an Orphan, An Encounter with God. Well, things have been pretty good, uh, thanks to God, and uh, we're now, I'm now living in uh, Clanton, Alabama. Thank you, Ms. Garland. And then let us know, like, uh, what makes you write this book, you know, as an orphan, you know, Girlene, uh, who was an orphan? What makes you, what puts you together to say, hey, I want to write a book like this and so people can go and read because there's a lot of stuff that about this book. Um, you mentioned like the hurt, the problem, the trials and tribulation and the good times, you know, and you mentioned cities, countries too. So. What makes you write this book? And um, in the book, you mentioned um, there are a lot of transition um, when you were in orphanage. You were moving around, like they were moving you places because I mean it didn't last. And there, that's when the ups and downs came, the trials and tribulation. Um, and you know, you're not the only kids that have been an orphan in Haiti, um, all over the world. Um, tell me a little bit, like the last family you end up with. They treated you like family. Um, they treated you, treated you like you know daughter and you know daughter and mother and stuff like that. Father, they both parents died. They were treating you like their kids. Um, tell us a little bit. You don't have to tell us everything, but you can tell us a little bit about it. And also, um, not a lot of parent, not a lot, lot of, not a lot of orphan had a father or a mother, you know, to be with them. And you happen to have a father, but he couldn't hinder you, and like to you know to to financially, but he had to give you away just for a family to take care of you to orphanage. Yes, Jonah. Some of the ups and downs uh, I had while I was going from one orphanage to another. Um, was the first the first orphanage that my father took me to was uh, uh, I was I was very young at the time didn't really understand what was all going on but I, I know that 
I wasn't happy. I was separated from my father. I wasn't happy. And um, there were all big kids there, and there wasn't nobody my age there. And, um, well, the reason why uh, I, I got out of that orphanage was uh, the man who used to run that orphanage, his mother had died, and he had decided to shut down the orphanage. And, and he told all of us that um, he's going to take us to all of us to our uh, parents. Um, but he ended up dropping me off and another girl at a social uh, uh, place, you know. Uh, and um, there was one of the social uh, worker. Uh, she seen the, when the doctor dropped us off. And the doctor said that he would come back for us, but he never did come back. And so she came to us and she asked me, she said, um, she said, uh, what are you guys doing here? And we told her that the doctor who dropped us off, he said he would come back for us, and he never did come back. And she said, well, let me tell you the truth, he's not coming back. Um, he, she said, but I, but I know a place where I can take you to. So she said, I'm going to take you to this place. It's a different orphanage, but I'm not going to leave you there. You're going to be there for two weeks until I find a different place for you. So she drove us to the next orphanage, which I was so unhappy again because there were big kids there. They wanted no place for me, and I was so miserable, and uh, I couldn't wait for her to come back. And she did come back after two full weeks as she had said, and she took me and another girl named Nadia, and she took us to a third orphanage, which was running by a Jamaican lady. And this Jamaican lady, she was not a good, she was not a very good person. She mistreated us, and uh, she had uh, lands and uh, uh, properties and uh, beds and every, you name it, but she had gathered all of us into one room, all of us to sleep in, and it was so uncomfortable, we slept on the floor, and, um, and again, I was, I wasn't too happy, I was a little bit, uh, comforted, because there were other kids my age there, but, you know, as a child, uh, you can tell when things are going right and when things are not, you know, when things are not going right, you could feel it. And that's how I felt. And uh, I think I was probably there for a couple of years and that woman ended up dying um, because she was sick. And another lady, a Jamaican lady, her friend, it took over. So she took all of us after her death. She took all of us to her place. She was a missionary lady also. She was a woman of God. And she she treated she treated us right. She loved us until a missionary couple came and they said that God had sent them. And uh, they got acquainted with us and we fell in love with them. Um, we felt so good around them and the Jamaican lady said, well, since I see them kids took a liking to you guys, why don't you guys just take over? So they did took over the orphanage. They took all of us to a different place at Delma 31. That was a, that was a nice home, a big house, two rooms, um, I'm sorry, two uh, stories. It had many bedrooms, many many bathrooms, many rooms, many places, backyards, front yards to run around to play. We were so happy. I was so confident. Wow. Curling, um, I read the book and I want you to uh, be successful with this book. And I hope a lot of orphanages, um, like the owner of the orphanage can read the book and treat kids in Haiti better. 
And also, you mentioned a lot of scriptures, you, and then you kind of relate through the scriptures. Um, you you kind of relate. Um, it's like you bring in perspective, like these things were matching the trials and tribulation you, po you posted. A lot of Christian people, they need to buy the book. Um, Non-Christian can buy the book too, um, to know what's going on in Haiti uh, with orphanage. And a, a lot of them, a lot of them don't know. If you don't know how to get the book, please, um, girling, tell us where can we get the book. Uh, I already read the book. It was an awesome book. I was on the plane and listening, listening to everything, reading, reading the book. It was amazing. And you still, you still doing your transition in life because as a Christian, you don't know where God may send you. But girling, where can we find a book like this? Because this book is very awesome, and I want people to go and read it and find it. And then also a hard copy. Um, church can we talk about that. Church can can relate to the whole thing. Thank you, Girlene. Um, the book is right there. You guys can grab it. Um, you can go online, like she said. And also, um, Girlene, if you have a last word um, to um, anything you want to mention, just mention it to them. Um, let them know why they should buy the book. And also, this is your ministry. Um, you are putting together and you're almost done with the ministry and people can check you out. The name is Whirlwind Crossfire Ministry. Um, Girlene, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you from all, all the way from Alabama. And I'm all the way in Texas and I really, really appreciate. I want people to understand the work that I do is not easy. I'm not doing things just for fame, but I'm doing things because I want you guys to know what's going on in other world. Um, thank you for watching Haitian Jonas. Please get the Haitian Jonas app. If you don't know how to get it, you can go to your um, Apple phone or Google Play, uh, which is Android Gal Galaxy, or you can go to your Apple store and Download the um, the app. It's a dollar ninety nine cents one time forever. Please don't lose your email, and if you ever lose your phone, you still can get the app again. Thank you for supporting Haitian Jonas. My goal is to make sure that I build a beautiful basketball court for kids in Haiti. I will be donating millions of dollars to the kids from the app. If you make this happen, it's going to happen. You watching HaitianJonas.com. Thank you very much. Scriptures. Well, I, I thank God that I am so blessed that He has sent two angels at this time, at the time, to come and raise us up, raise me up in a way that I should go. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs, you know, it says that to raise up a child in a way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. I thank God for. It was a gift, it was a blessing that they had raised me up in the way that I should go. And now I am in God's will. I'm, I am in, I know that I'm in His perfect will. And um, uh, with my husband. And, you know, uh, you know, the, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, God has called all of us to be a disciple. He he has called all of us to be a disciple to spread the word out. You know, and I thank him, I thank God that I have answered that call. Many orphans uh, right now, they don't know how precious their lives are to God because people have mistreated them. They have, uh, you know, they have uh, felt like they're, you know, the worth nothing but this is a lie from the devil um, God has a great plan for all the orphans out there he's got a great purpose and I, I counsel you I encourage you to find him find Jesus start developing a relationship with him today because your destiny is in his hand your future is in his hand um, I encourage you through this book as you read it you will see the plans of God for your life 
it, it is a life as an orphan is a life uh, changing uh, book. It's uh, it's it, it's very uh, inspirational. It's uh, it's very uplifting, you know. And you will find who God is through this book. And uh, also, uh, you can go get this book online at uh, Amazon and uh, Barnes and Nobles and Apple iBook. If you don't want to purchase it online, you could call the company and order it by phone at 866-909-2665. Back to you, Jonah. This is how the video was being made, and I want you guys to stay tuned. Thank you very much for your support. It's not easy to do. Put, putting you, By yourself, you're doing all this work um, behind the scenes. Thank you for watching Haitian Jonas, and I really appreciate that. See you guys next time.